Hello? Hello, Mr. Mark? Hello, please answer. My name is John for the Moon Township. <laughs> township. Oh, uh, man, I guess, I mean, hey, we're going to keep doing this every week, folks. Every week. Mark Man Show, first name, where are you calling from? John, Moon Township? John, what do you want to discuss with him? I placed wager on Steelers to win the Super Bowl uh, $50,000. I want to get his opinion. Hey John, I'm going to put you out of gas. Down. Okay. But that's how this team is built. This team is built on the star players being able to carry them based on all circumstances. Now, the hope is they got more help and they did a better job with the bottom six. We'll see. The hope is that because they can have Latang and Carlson out there on the ice for like 45 to 50 minutes a game if they need to, the offense will get better because they're out there more often. There's two Latangs now, and that'll make a huge difference come March. It should. And I hope all those theories are right. But they do have to have, if not the galvanizing one-game thing, then the hot stretches have to start distancing the five out of sevens where they lose in regulation. 412-333-9939. John, you're on 1059 x Hello, I placed a $50,000 wager on the Steelers to win the Super Bowl on FanDuel. Do you think I have a chance to win? Accent. I know what you're trying to do. It is a terrible accent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, well that didn't work. <laughs> you didn't like the accent. Oh my God. I know what you're trying to do. That is a terrible accent. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. We tried. We tried. John from Moon Township. I guess he didn't like it. His producer cleared me. So, it is what it is. Let's get into the show. Let it soak in. Just let it soak in for a second. That's December 1st you're hearing, ladies and gentlemen. You know the drill. Welcome to the Bayside Report. Mark Madden, his substitute. What was that about? The producer patched me through <laughs> with the, I did a, it was kind of a half-assed. I was kind of caught off guard to be honest. I, I sat and waited for fucking 20 minutes before I got through. And then his replacement was on my ass like that. He's like, no, that's a fake accent, bad accent. We weren't informed. I admit, you gotta stay in the pocket more. First prank call in nine years. We will get back into the grind, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Again, the 55th edition. Christmas time is upon us. Three and a half weeks until that special day. My apartment was underwater four days ago. Trying to get some fucking money out of this. I don't know what the procedure is if I have to claim some damaged items. We'll find out. Serenade. Just serenade. You all need this. This is your December Christmas this is like your fucking Christmas shot. This is going to get you in the season. There's no better way. Just listen for a minute. That's a violin. That's a fucking violin if I ever heard one. It's the Bayside Report. 2023, we are wrapping up rapidly. Grand Theft Auto 6! The trailer comes out Tuesday. That's what I'm talking about. I spent my Thanksgiving in a casino, and it was weird, but it was good. I lost a hundred, whatever it is, what it is, the minimums were high. This ain't no Vegas, baby. This is the motherfucking Seminole Native American tribe. You are fucking around with the realest, the toughest of Florida. There ain't no one dollar minimums here. That's kind of what fucked me up. I'm a, I'm a renegade gambler. You win a little bit, you cash the fuck out, and you run around. You can't do that when the minimums are $10. Welcome to the Bayside Report. And just like that, just like that, we're into our mush report. The mush gambling study, whatever you... This is the defying study of the NFL logic. We're going to look back at this six years from now and think, wow, this is how... We figure out the winners and the losers. Cowboys, Commanders, ding, ding, ding. That's a win. Seahawks, 49ers, that's a loss. Young Dolph and the Jets, ding, ding, ding. The Dolphins, 
are on fire. That's our fucking team. Last but not least, this was our any given... I think it was a third Sunday, any given Sunday game. Chargers, Ravens, uh, that's a loss. 21 and 27 overall. Two and two on the week. We keep splitting those fucking weeks, people. Keep splitting the weeks. Can't have that. You cannot have that. Here we go. I haven't even picked them yet. We're going to do live picks right now. Dolphins, Commanders, Dolphins spread whatever it is to the bank, to the bank. Ding, ding, ding. Chiefs, Packers, any given Sunday game of the week. Any given Sunday game of the week. Packers, money line. Take the Packers. Colts, Titans. Colts, Titans, Titans. Titans are going to get the job done. That's an easy pick. One more. One more for you. We're going bold. We're going very bold. I think it's week 13. Who the fuck knows? The Rams and the Browns. L.A. Rams. Rams, Rams, Rams. Let's fucking go beat the Browns because the Steelers need it. That's your mush report. Any, what other news could we talk about? Derek Chauvin got stabbed 22 times in jail. How the fuck he survived it too? But here's the thing. He got stabbed by a former, we're putting our little quotation marks up for y'all, a former CIA agent? Or FBI agent? Something's a little fishy. I don't know. But, I mean, hey, that's fucking savage, man. 22 stabbed. I wonder what he got stabbed with. Enough of that music. I wonder what he got stabbed with. <laughs> like a fucking... You get stabbed with a toothbrush? A toothpick? I don't know. Oh, okay. So the casino... It was... It was... It's a nice casino. The one in... I've only... I've been to three casinos outside of Vegas. I've been to Rivers in Pittsburgh. I've been on a casino boat in the middle of bumfuck Egypt, Indiana. And I've been to this one. And I would say... There's nothing like Vegas, folks. I really... You feel like you're going into it's like Chipotle versus Moe's. When you're in when you're in Vegas, you're in Chipotle. You know what the fuck you're getting. When you're No, Cordoba. Cordoba. It's like the non Vegas casinos are like Cordoba. When you're going to the non Vegas casino, you know you're not getting the same experience. You're probably gonna lose some cash when you're going there. But it was fun. I, the the dinner <laughs> the dinner was weird, dude. They they had uh, I ended up getting ribs. I got ribs and French fries. Probably the craziest Thanksgiving dinner I've ever had. But it was it got seedy. It started getting seedy around around like eight o'clock. It was packed for fucking Thanksgiving. Very surprised. Very surprised. There was a a car crash on this bridge by me the other day. There were people waiting there for seven hours. Oh, I'd, I, if I was coming home from work, fucking forget it. The rest of the week, it's over. That was on Wednesday. So you have that going on. But the weather has turned for the better here. It is a nice 80 degrees here in Florida. Real versus fake Christmas tree. You have to go with the real tree, folks. Now, of course, in my situation, if I was to get a little tree, it would be fake, of course, for maintenance purposes. And I live in Florida. Where do I get a little tiny tree at? I think the con conifer? Is it the conifer tree? They're more accessible up north. So, with that being said, you have to you have to go with a real tree if you have access to the real tree. That that's Christmas. That's authentic. When you smell and when you smell that fucking Christmas in the air, there's nothing that can go wrong. You're laying in deer shit in the middle of a field, the whole family's arguing about the fucking tree you picked out. That's the wrong size. It's crooked. It's not gonna fit. It's gonna look weird. The dad's down on the fucking ground with a chainsaw laying in that deer shit saying, I'm already halfway there. It's too late. It's coming home. But then you take a picture. The cool thing about getting a real tree is they take your picture after year by year, at least where I, where we used to go cut our real trees down. The Belich family did not fuck around with fake trees. My parents still, still getting real trees, almost pushing 70 years old. They stay to tradition. Anyways, moving on. I'm thinking of, I've just been thinking about shit. You know, it's the end of the year. You're recapping. You're just thinking about all the moves you made from January until now and how long a year really is. I mean, a year is a long time, but then again, it's not. It is not. But a lot can, a year is not a long time, but a lot could happen in a year. That's a better way to phrase it. I mean, a day, 
a day could really be an adventure of success and journey. You never know. So I was thinking about eighth grade. I had a couple friends over. I would always, I went, I'd built fires in my backyard, my parents' house. We'd just fuck around. You know, we weren't, I wasn't a bad eighth grade. I was pretty well behaved. It was just more of build a fire, fucking get lighter fluid, douse it, you know, maybe throw a television in there. Just reckless behavior. But sometimes you're vibing out, listening to music, eating fucking chips, uh, chips, a whole bit bit buoys, <laughs> chips, a whole bit bit bookie bookies. There you go. So I had a few friends over and they all, they all kept leaving one by one. So eventually it was just me and my one, my one buddy that I haven't talked to since high school, maybe even, yeah, early high school. We'll call him beat pop. So me and beat pop. We're sitting there chilling out, eating eating bips ahoy boclet bit buoys, <laughs> just just hanging out, dude, just bullshitting. And I literally, I'm not looking at him, but he go, he's like quiet, and I'm talking like, hey, like here, you want these bips ahoy boclet bips? And I go to hand him the bookies, and he's on the ground going, <laughs> having a seizure, having a seizure in my backyard. I'm in eighth grade, so what's that? Twelve. 11 to 12 years old. Oh, I went ape shit, dude. I was like, oh, fuck. But I, I knew I right away. I called 911. I, I didn't fuck around. It, it, it's common instinct. You just call the, call the ambulance. So I called them. I'm trying to think. He had the seizure. I got him on his side. And I, I kind of even knew. It's instinct, dude. If, if someone ever has a seizure in front of you, you'll, you'll know the procedure. You'll know how to act when, when you need to. You'll know that you have to get them on their side. Don't let them bite their tongue. Call the ambulance. Call that motherfucking ambulance. Amberlance. And I did that. That's what I did. And they came. And I'm like, once again, I'm trying to think. He was just kind of laying on the side, and, like he sees, but like he calmed down. So then he was he was good there. And then the ambulance came. And then my neighbors, like my parents, my parents were out and about, but they were like in the area. So they they were, I told them I was like, yo. Beat Bop had just had a motherfucking seizure. I don't know if it was the Bips Ahoy Bocklet Bit Boopies that did him in or what. <laughs> so I shouldn't be laughing. I'm, I'm not laughing. It's, an, it's a memory. So the neighbors are over. We got him at like the Amberlance, loads him up, gets him in. I remember the Amberlance guy. He goes, You did the right thing, kid. I was like, Fuck yeah. Hero moment right there. Could have saved a life. I think it was like a medic. I, don't, I think he had a medication issue. Something along that nature, like that. So they got him, and yeah, I mean that—that's about it. You sometimes, sometimes you gotta be on your your toes, people. It's scary. It's scary out there. You, you never know. I don't know if it was the bips ahoys. So, yeah. <laughs> so that happened in my life. I also uh, have I ever did any other saving routines? Not really. I've always. Uh, I feel like I've always kind of been the savey, but I've never really had any big injuries. I've, I've choked on food a few times. I've had to, I've had to had the Heimlich hit on me maybe once or twice just cause I'd be eating too fast. That's a concern. I'm like, yeah, I got it. Now that I live alone and kind of, kind of running a one man state over here in Clearwater, Florida, got to slow down the eating. Got to chew that food, chew, 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 and swallow that Bips Ahoy Bucklet Bip Bookie. Oh, uh, I had an, I, oh yeah, I also remembered senior year of college. Now this is a good story, everyone. This is just kind of, kind of a good tale, perhaps. I got kind of scammed. <laughs> this scamming has been a common theme of the Bayside Report. I got kind of scammed by my college in a, in a backward, like they backdoored the fuck out of me. Financial, it was a pretty, pretty clever financial scam so i went to community college two years got that associate transferred into carlo i had so many fucking credits they're like yeah dude you're like you should be a cakewalk to get a business management degree and we'll send you out to be a corporate droid here in no time perfect so i was scheduling i remember doing scheduling junior junior year spring semester junior year i'm scheduling that motherfucker with my guidance count not guidance counselor you know academic advisor of the college and she's like, dude, you're you're wrapping up, bro. Like, you could take art, you could take theater, you could take history, 
you could take whatever the fuck you want. And I remember it was like a party. I was like, oh, okay, I'll take theater. And she's like, yeah, take theater. Why not? I was like, yeah. She goes, you're done. She goes, you're wrapping up. You got your internship complete. This is a cakewalk. And they they didn't even mention the the spring semester. This was the fall of senior year. It was like, all right, dude, I'm I'm cakewalking fall of senior year. Perhaps I could graduate a semester early. So from August, September to October, I'm just dicking around. I have 12 credits playing collegiate golf. That was actually my best season because I had nothing going on, had nothing to do, dude. Lift weights. I was fucking shredded shredded with fucking muscle i remember some dude he's like bro are you fucking linebacker i was like nah i'm a golfer i'm a division three golfer because i college is glorious you lift weights for an hour and a half because you've nothing to do you go home and play video games and hit floods nasty ass flood water because you have nothing to do cook a little burger and some fucking rice watch a movie, do some homework, do it all again the next day, hang out with your fucking roommates, your friends. That was glory. So anyways, back to the story. I took this art class because I was under the gumption that I could. And I was also working this maintenance job at the same time where they, they would pay me, they would pay me to just walk around and fucking blow leaves in a circle. They, it was pretty much a free for all. They went under sadly and got bought out. Anyways, back to the art class. So the art class went on and it's, it's probably about October at this point. And they're like, we're going to bring in a naked lady and you're going to draw her. I was like, what? And I was already, I was like a C minus. This was actually, it was like a 60 year old professor. He's like, yo, well, we could flip a coin for a grade. We could negotiate your grade. We could have a fair talk about what you think's deservable. And I think I negotiate a C plus cause I'm, yeah, drawing. I love to fucking draw. Love to draw, but I'm not good. No bueno. So this naked lady comes in, dude, and she's just standing up. And I'm the only... Let me also mention, I went to a college that had maybe 10, 90 to 10 girl to guy ratio. So 90% girl, 10% guy. So I'm the only dude in this like 30-person art class. And we all sit in a circle. And this maybe 40-year-old lady gets up. And just drops her shit, dude, naked, hanging there. And she stands there for like an hour posing. And you're just drawing her, bro. They had to, they had to draw the shades up on the window because the class was right on the street in Fifth Avenue in Pittsburgh. If you know, you know. It's a pretty busy area in the city. But I don't know. what. Yeah. So that was fun, dude. And then I, the guy I worked with, the maintenance job, got all this acid. And we went on a little experimental phase if you if you could say that for like two weeks dude and like ja- i was writing a jazz paper on acid just having a having a fucking moment about errol gardner some some jazz musician from the 30s represent i wrote my heart and soul out i remember i, I was it was like a, a hundred level jazz class half the kids probably weren't even turning shit in and getting A's and B's. I was writing a six page fucking synopsis about Errol Garner. Wish I could read that again. And yeah, I w- it was, it was, that was just kind of a weird phase of senior year. It was kind of almost like I felt a storm was brewing, which is what we're getting to. So I was dropping acid. I had a girlfriend too. I was hanging out with her. Things were kind of, we- yeah, it was like a weirdly good time. But like I said, you felt a storm brewing. I was calling basketball games, soccer games, just kind of dragging by the 100 level classes, having a good time. So it comes to schedule spring class time. We're hitting November, December now. It's all right. We got to schedule the spring. Go back to the same advisor, the same advisor that we were hooping and hollering and partying with. She goes, wait, Garrett. She goes, you need quantitative reasoning. You need statistics. You need this. You need science. You need... I'm like, what the fuck? Didn't we just have a party in here a couple months ago saying I'm good to go? This is a cakewalk. So no, I got loaded up. I had like 23 credits in my spring, my my final semester. I was like, what the fuck? I went to the dean. I was like, yo, I literally 
pull the footage, pull the footage. We were, we was having a party in here. Thought they were going to order champagne in the way it was going. So anyways, I guess the moral of the story is I had to lock in no more, no more dropping acid and writing jazz papers and, and blowing leaves in a circle. Sadly, that apartment complex went under that sucked, dude. I would, that job was kind of a whole scam and a half. Good times. We would we would go to the park and play frisbee golf. Say we were going to Home Depot to pick up parts. Nah, we were playing frisbee golf. We were nah. We were Permani brothers having a beer. What do you mean? So the leave, yeah, the leave. Oh, I there were cops sitting at the end of the road watching me blow leaves in a circle, making sure I was keeping them in the area. Great times, great times. That was just uh. Some good stories from the past. Um, how's Molly doing? Where's the cat? Where's the cat? The cat's having issues, folks. She has asthma. It seems like she has asthma. So I got her on a lot of medication right now. I'm doing doing a steroid liquid through her throat. I'm crushing pills up in her food. We're deworming her just to be safe. But Molly is coming right along. How about some music? What the fuck? It's Christmas, everybody. What do we got? Oh, that's too calm. What's this? Uh, it's like that. That's like the wrapping up Christmas. That's the song you play when you're going to bed Christmas night. I don't know what this is. A little jazzy jazz. <laughs> I don't know. I was liking that shit. Yeah, yes, this right here, everyone. What else I have to tell y'all? Elon Musk, he told the New York Times to go fuck themselves. That was fucking amazing. Fuck it. Fuck them all, man. Fuck the opposition. We're here to tell. The Bayside Report is kind of, that's kind of our mission. Fuck the opposition. That's what we stand for. We're just here to try something and see where the hell it goes. And fuck the haters. Fuck them, man. Do what you want to do, everyone. It's Christmas time. Give back to those in need. Reach out to those in need, <laughs> family members in need, friends in need. Check on your folks, see how they be doing and whatnot. Motherfucker. <laughs> Coors Light, I'm having a Coors Light right now. Wow, I don't, yeah, this year, guys, amazing. We're just ranting, hooping, and hollering at this point. I think I hit all my points on this little notepad. I, uh, I have a lot of paths I could take, y'all. I have a lot of paths I could take, and I'm not sure which one to take. This is the first time in my life I'm just like, damn, bro, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm, my main goal in life is to escape corporate life and do something I'm passionate about and still make it make cash that I can pay my bills. Simple. It's simple, but I have to start now, start sooner than later. No time wasted, people. No time wasted in this world. 2023, that was the motherfucking year to lay the foundation. We laid the bricks. We laid the bricks. 2024, we built the fucking house. 2025, we might get solar panels on that motherfucker. (laughs) Listen to the Christmas music. Let it take you away. Let it it just take you in. I was thinking about my dad got discriminated against <coughs> a fair amount by TSA post 9-11. Nothing he could do about it. He looks like an A-Rap. He, look, he, he looks like he's coming out of that Hamas training camp. Still to this day. He looks like the grandpa of the Hamas leader. <laughs> Come on, we can't end on that. Ah, oh, what's this shit? They went super white on us. Back to the repeat. Back to the repeat. Anyways. Yeah, dude, we went to Mexico, and they would just pull that son of a bitch out of security. And he was an airline mechanic, so they had suspicion. <laughs> like, airline mechanic looks like an A-Rap. Yup. Then they hear him talk. They're like, nah, it's just some white dude with a Pittsburgh accent. This might be a Mexican. Yeah, they thought he was a Mexican coming back from Mexico. But he's not. He's just a fucking croat. He's a dark crow. Maybe some Bosnian. I always think he got some little Bosnian, Kazakhstan, maybe Mongolian bloodline in him. Because, dude, that motherfucker's dark. Dark, dark, dark. 
Um, <laughs> I think that's it. Is that it for the Bayside Report this week? We really had an action-packed, quick half hour or so here. Mark Mann's replacement. Cheers to you, brother. You flustered me. Should have hung in the pocket and gave you a little more of the business. I got. I need to work on my accent. Or the accent, the very bad, the very bad accent. It is dead ass. We got to get the accent stronger. Coming back stronger. That's the goal. God bless everyone. I hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week.